Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday and welcome back to the Kids Learning Club. As usual, I'm going to give everyone just a couple seconds to join us. Uh, the internet is always a, a finicky thing. Okay, so I will say once again, Welcome to those of you that are joining us. Good morning, happy Monday, and welcome back to the Kids Learning Club. If this is your first time watching us today, a very special welcome. Uh, my name is Miss Adelaide, and I work with Miss Sarah Noftel on HowWeLearn.com, uh, which uh, we're happy to say seems to have been a really great resource for families at this time, and usually is all year, all year round. Um, so we're very happy for you joining us. Again, if this is your first time, uh, be ready for a fun-filled uh, 10 to 15 minutes of learning and fun and often some funniness, hilarity as well, <laughs> okay? And um, you will be asked sometimes in this video to maybe uh, leave a comment during the video or after. Um, so maybe mom and dad can help you out with that. Uh, if the time comes for that today, okay? So, uh, let's dive in and get started. Welcome to those that have joined us. Happy Monday. I hope you had a great weekend and welcome back to the Kids Learning Club. Uh, we always start off our Kids Learning Club with a riddle to get our minds warmed up. Uh, last week on Friday, we had a funny one. Now, hang on. Ah, uh, yes. This one was a little bit tricky. Last week's riddle was, what has to be broken before you can use it? And the correct answer was an egg, an egg. And some of our fans uh, that have been watching uh, along last week, um, Brayden and Spencer, uh, as well as Carson, uh, they've been really on the ball with some of these riddles and they got this one right as well. Uh, so congratulations again, last week's riddle. What has to be broken before you can use it? An egg, okay? That's a tricky one because when something breaks, usually you can't use it anymore. Not in the case of an egg. So for this week or for today, pardon me, because we do do a riddle every day, um, we have a fun one for those people that like letters and words. Here it is. What begins with E, ends with E, but holds only one letter? Hmm. What begins with E and ends with an E, but holds only one letter? Hmm. So remember, I said this one's, um, this one might be good for those of you that like the alphabet and playing with words. Okay, I look forward to hearing your answers. At the Kids Learning Club, right after our riddle, we like to have a fun fact, to share a fun fact. Um, before I share our new fact, last week we shared a fact with you about hippo's milk and how it is pink. Okay, now usually before we do these fun facts, uh, we do some pretty extensive uh, research to confirm uh, what we've shared with you. And we did do that uh, this first time, but then um, as we were, I was a little bit more curious about this and I went in again after we watched our video and I was like, okay, tell me again, like how bright is the pink? Actually, I was curious, like, is it a really bright pink? Is it a dull pink? Um, and when we went in to do some further research, we actually found out that um, hippo's milk isn't always pink. It can sometimes be pink. So in case you stumble upon that, uh, parents maybe on the internet or if you're reading some fact books, um, we want to make sure that you're getting the right information, right? That's important. And so it can sometimes be pink uh, because sometimes um, some of the secretions from or things that come out of the hippo's body um, that can mix with the milk can make it pink, okay? But it's not always pink, okay? And also good to know in case you cross a hippo on your walks today and you're saying the milk isn't pink and you're like, Miss Adelaide was not right. Okay, <laughs> so one or the other, you're looking at a fact book, you meet a hippo today on a walk. Okay, we wanna make sure you have the right information. All right, so now that that is clarified, today's fact 
day. Um, so Miss Sarah and I were talking about this fact and she shared this one with me, but you know, it's really funny. My husband actually uh, shared this one with me recently. I did. I said, nope, that does not make sense. And I tested it on myself and, and uh, this one's been stumping me all weekend. Okay, so let's see if, uh, if you experience this. Okay, our fun fact for today is, did you know that when we are breathing, we only use one nostril at a time? What? But we have two. That makes no sense. I didn't understand. I did not believe my husband. I was sitting there breathing, uh, <laughs> checking to see if I'm using two nostrils, but it's true. So it's something funny called nasal, okay? And we only use one nostril at a time to be breathing in and out. And every few hours, our body switches. And it does that switch by causing some swelling inside your nose that goes into one nostril. And then that nostril that swells, it kind of closes up a little bit, lets the other one open and start working more. That is so crazy. What I thought was really interesting as I kept learning about it is depending on the nostril that you're breathing in at any time of the day, your body will be getting oxygen, more oxygen or more air, more oxygen uh, to different parts of your brain and your body and your brain and your body are doing kind of different things. So isn't that funny? Another funny thing that I thought was really, really interesting. Now this, this is what they call in science a theory. So they've tested it out. They think that this is right, but they're not totally sure. Maybe they, they need some more information. So they have a theory that um, this might be why we move in our sleep sometimes. Because if you lie on one side for a long time, that swelling in your nose starts to happen and then the switch happens, okay? And then your body starts to say, oh, I need more on that other side of the body. And then you'll move in your sleep to get more comfy and to get air to a, the different organs and different parts of your brain. Isn't that crazy? That is so crazy. That blew my mind. I didn't believe it. If you don't believe me, get mom and dad to help you with Google. Look up the nasal cycle for yourself. It's crazy stuff. The body is fascinating. All right. <laughs> so now that your brains are all jumbled up with crazy facts and riddles, let's have a nice relaxing poem. Okay. Um, we've been sharing a lot of poems lately um, from the author Jack Proletsky. Okay, and I'm sure we'll come back to him uh, sometime in our videos. Uh, today, I'd like to share, you, share with you a poem from a North American favorite. I'm not sure um, how well known this gentleman is around the world, to be honest. Um, but I have a nice book here at home um, called A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. And it's the poems and lyrics or songs of Mr. Rogers. Uh, so Mr was a, a program um, for young kids like you uh, when I was when I was little okay and other people were little that are older maybe your moms and dads remember and this is a beautiful book so again if, if you want to grab it it's a very beautiful book um, that has all of the songs that he sang maybe not all of them most of them the songs that he sang and um, and they've been written down in poems okay so this have today is called I Give a Hoot for You. And the lyrics of the song were written by Josie Carey and uh, Mr. Fred Rogers wrote the music for it. But today I'm just going to read you the beautiful poem. So I give a hoot for you. Oh, I give a hoot for you because golly, you're neat. Yes, I give a hoot for you. You simply couldn't be beat. You're nice as pie and really I don't know when, why, or what, but I've got to say that in every way, you're my favorite. Oh, I give a hoot for you. You're swell. Yes, I give a hoot for you. You're absolutely for real. I'm hoping, too, as I hoot for you, that you will soon agree to hoot and howl like this and give a hoot for me. Hoot. So there's, there's our little poem with our little owl, okay? And he has favorite, he is the favorite on his balloon. 
Um, so this idea of giving a hoot, okay, means that you care, you care for someone. So maybe uh, you haven't heard that expression uh, before, but when we say, I give a hoot, okay, that means I care, I care about that, I care about that person. Uh, so let's see if we can predict uh, this rhyming uh, scheme of this lovely poem that makes us feel very, very special. So again, it's called, I give a hoot for you. Oh, I give a hoot for you, cause golly, you're neat. Yes, I give a hoot for you. You simply couldn't be beat. You're nice as and really I don't know when, why, or what. But I've got to say that in every way, you're my favorite. <laughs> they kind of do some funny things with the word there to make it rhyme. Oh, I give a hoot for you. You're swell. That's how I feel. I give a hoot for you. You're absolutely for real. I'm hoping too, as I hoot for you, that you will soon agree to hoot and howl like this wise old owl and give a hoot for me. And we can all try our best owl hoot. Hoot! <laughs> I'm sure you could make a better owl hoot than that. Wonderful. So again, uh, that's from a poem sung on the Mr. Rogers show. Okay, and Mr. Fred Rogers wrote the music for that. Alrighty. So after our poems, like to do an activity challenge. So something that you can do at home with your family, sometimes on your own, um, that are usually fun and involve uh, some learning too. So for, today, um, for today's activity challenge, you are going to need, moms and dads, don't get too excited, okay? You're, <laughs> you're going to need a dustpan, okay? And a little, okay, one of these, a little dustpan and a broom. Uh, or a big broom is okay too. It might be a little bit more challenging, okay, uh, for, for tiny hands to have a big broom. And don't worry, okay, we're not making you do chores. Although chores are great, very useful, okay, helps you learn how to be a big person, okay. But this is what you're going to need. Again, moms and dads, contain your excitement. And the activity is called Sweep Up a Name, all right. And for this activity, you're going to sweep up or the letters of your name. Okay, so sweep up a name is someone can make for you, you can or mom and dad, some little letters on paper. Okay, here are some of the letters of my name. Okay, Adelaide. Okay, and we're going to scatter them on the ground. And we have to see, can you sweep up the letters of your name in order? Okay, so for me, I'd have to go find the letter A first. For Adelaide, I have to go find that and sweep that up first. And then I need to go find D. And I need to go on the floor and find D and sweep that up second. Okay? Uh, so that is great for sweeping up your name. Um, for maybe little boys and girls that maybe are not sure yet of uh, all the letters of their name yet. Maybe they're still learning A, B, Okay? Maybe mom and dad can cut out some letters and check out F. Can you find F? And then uh, you can go try to look for F, the letter that mom or dad calls. Um, or if you are a little bit older, maybe you're really comfortable with your name. You know your ABCs. Maybe you're working on some sight words or some um, with your mom and dad. So here I have bat and cat, okay? So if you're working uh, sight words with mom and dad, they can write those down and they can call those out. Okay, so can you find cat for me? Um, or can you find all the words that start with B? Okay, and then you'd have to sweep those up. Okay, so um, that's a fun game to keep us active. Um, and maybe learn some sweeping skills <laughs> and also to become familiar with our names, our letters, and important words. These are not the right side. There we go. Wonderful. So I'd love to see some photos of you uh, doing your sweep up the name challenge. Um, and, and hopefully you have a lot of fun with that. Okay, so make sure you uh, share some pictures of you taking part in that activity challenge. Um, for our last activity, those of you that have been with us, 
you have seen us read some stories at the end. You've also seen us uh, do a bit of an atlas challenge where we see where people are watching from around the world. We've had a lot of viewers telling us that they're coming in from different parts of Canada, the United States, Europe, um, even, even in Asia. Okay, so Australia. So people are watching all over, which is fabulous. And um, I've been encouraging people to know where they're coming from and uh, maybe share a fun fact. We will do that on Wednesday for what we're gonna now call Worldly Wednesday, but you can still share with me today. And we're gonna do our Atlas activity then. This week, we're gonna be trying um, to have some of these activities we've been doing each day, a different one at the end. And for today, Mondays are going to be our Music and Movement Mondays, okay? Today, we're gonna start nice and easy, super simple. Uh, for Music and Movement, We'll just have some fun singing a well a well known song, and if you don't if you don't know it, you can try your best to follow with me. I'll repeat it a couple of times, and we're also gonna try to tack on moving, okay? Um, and this is going to be just fun and easy uh, and simple, okay? For most most of our days, most of our music Mondays. Um, for today, we're gonna start nice and easy and just warm ourselves up. And we're gonna sing uh, a favorite of mine and my kids, um, and it's called B I N G O. Okay. So if you want to get up now, I will a different okay when we're doing a little bit more. But uh, and you can just start walking and snapping or clapping to the rhythm. Maybe just actually just walk because we'll do some clapping in this song. Okay. And I'm gonna explain to you how if you don't know how B-I-N-G-O goes. Okay? So, ready? One, two, three. There was a farmer who had a dog and bingo was his name. Oh, clap with me. B-I-N-G-O, 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 and bingo was his name. Oh, so you see, when I say bingo, and each time I say a letter, I clap, okay? So maybe you can stomp, your feet to keep that beat was a farmer who had a dog and bingo was his name oh b i n g o b i n g o b i n g o and bingo was his name oh okay now when we say the letters okay we're slowly going to take a letter away when we say it but we're going to keep clapping i'm sure that you can follow along You're Ready? There was a farmer who had a dog. Bingo was his name. Oh, I N G O, I N G O, I N G O, and Bingo was his name. Oh, there was a farmer who had a dog, and Bingo was his name. Oh, N G O, N G O. N-G-O and bingo was his name, oh. There was a farmer who had a dog and bingo was his name, oh. G-O, G-O, G-O and bingo was his name, oh. There was a farmer who had a dog and bingo was his name, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, and bingo was his name. Oh. There's going to be no talking for the letters. Okay, no talking for the letters, just clapping. Do you think you can do it? Ready? One, two, three, go. Was a farmer who had a dog and bingo was his name. Oh. And bingo was his name. Oh. And you can do a funny pose at the end. Because <laughs> you finish this off. Okay, good job. So for those of you that are older, maybe you can help your younger siblings if they want to sing that again today. Sing the same timing. Okay, so I did get a, getting a little notification that um, I'm struggling to connect. So I hope you heard those last few things. We are wrapping up anyway. Okay, so sorry if my internet just blipped out on you there for a minute. 
we just finished the B-I-N-G-O bingo song. Okay, and I was telling you that it's good for um, keeping a sense of rhythm. Wonderful. So thank you for, uh, for singing along with me. I hope you all joined in. It wasn't just me singing by myself, right? No? Good. <laughs> and I look forward to uh, seeing you tomorrow. And uh, please try your best to post some pictures of your activity challenge of Sweep Up a Name. And tomorrow, our different activity that we're going to do at the end is going to be a tongue twister. So Tuesdays are going to be tongue twister Tuesdays. Tuesdays? I can't even say Tuesday. Tongue twister Tuesdays. And uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you then. All right. Have a wonderful morning. Take care.